continuing to explore measures of center and statistics. Now that we've checked out some of the basics, let's look at the mid-range. Finding the mean from a frequency table, which is always fun, and how to figure out a weighted mean. And this will be very relevant to any students out there. The mid-range of a set of data is found by summing or adding up your minimum and maximum data values and then dividing by two. What does that remind you of? Right. So in other words, the mid-range is the average of the minimum and maximum data values. Cool, cool? Hmm, do you think this measure of center could be considered a resistant measure? What do you think? Remember that word, resistant? Why or why not? Well, no, as it's sensitive to outliers or we could call them extreme values. Just like the arithmetic mean. So in statistics ease, if you need to have some sort of a equation, the mid-range is equal to the minimum value plus the maximum value divided by two. Be careful, make sure you first add the min and the max before dividing by two. Otherwise, it will only divide the first one by two. All right, so finding the mean from a frequency table. What the heck was a frequency table for numerical data again? Oh yeah, we separated the data into classes of equal width, tallied or counted. The number of data values that fell into that class. Created our table and then constructed a, dun dun da good job, histogram. What happened to that data once we assigned it to classes? Didn't each particular value lose its, you know, individuality? It was just grouped, right? We didn't know if you had a class, you know, that went from 10 to 20. You don't know if it's 10, 11, 12, etc. Individuality. Unless, of course, you represent the raw data with the table, which is not typical. Why? Because the goal is to summarize the data. So, what we do is assign each of the counts in each class of the frequency table the value in the center of the corresponding class. Huh. What would be the center of each class? Maybe the, you got it, mid-range of each class. So, in statistics ease, it looks like X bar so again, this is just a special case of the arithmetic mean. So X bar is equal to the summation of the product of the frequencies times the corresponding mid-range values divided by the sum, sum of the frequencies. Be careful, F represents frequency. When 
you use C and F like that, usually you're thinking function, but it is not representing a function in this context. Cool, cool? Groovy. All right, so moving on, we have one last measure of center to examine, and then we'll get to a few examples. The weighted mean simply has us find the sum of the products of each data value and its corresponding weight. And then divide by what? Good, by the sum of all the weights. So again, in statistics ease, it looks like x bar, this is just another version of x bar, is equal to the sum of the products of the weights times x, where w denotes a particular weight and x denotes the data value which corresponds to that weight. And then you divide by the sum of all the weights. And remember, this figure here basically means, it's called sigma, but it means add them all up. Qualitative data, which is ordinal and has been coded using numbers, does have a meaningful mean. Again, it's all about how you collect and record the information. All right, ready for some examples, my statistics buddies? So here we go. We've been given, what, one, two, three, four, five, six values. We want to find the mean, median, and mid-range of the time and minutes it took six students to take their first exam. The times are provided below. What do you think the best measure of center is for this sample data and why? So, out of however many students Prof Myers has, or AKA Shannon has, we selected six, hopefully at random and well, and we are looking for information about all her classes so she knows how much time she needs to request from the Academic Proctoring Center next semester. All right, maybe we ought to, good, order the data. So from least to most, I believe we have, actually, just for fun, why don't we do a stem and leaf plot? What's our smallest value? It's a four, which represents tens. Let's see what else we have. We don't have any five, six, or seven, but we do have an eight, as in 88. We have 95 and 98, and we have 108, and we have 110. So, you didn't have to do that, by the way. I just think it makes it nice and easy. And, oops, I forgot to fill in the 45, so I forgot to fill in the leaf part. All right, so here we go. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six values. Let's do our little legend so we know what this means. So let's see, four, five equals 45 minutes, right? Alrighty, so what do you want to find first? So the median equals x tilde, 
which equals the middle number. Well, we have an even number of values. Do you remember what you're supposed to do? Awesome, you're supposed to find the average of the middle two values. So here we go, 45 is number one, 88 is two, 95 is three, 98 is four, 108 is five, 110 is six. So one, two, three, and then going from the other side, one, two, three. So we are going to average, oh, whoops, sorry. We are going to average these two. And remember, it's in the 90s. So here we go. The median will be, let's see if this shows up well, 95 plus 98 divided by two you work that on in your calculator, you'll get that this is equal to 96.5 minutes. Groovy? Awesome. All right, so another measure of center that relies on order is the mid-range. So the mid-range is, let's find another color. Do you see that Right here, the 45, and over here, the 110 represent the minimum and maximum values. And if we want to average those values, we'll find the mid-range. So the mid-range equals 45 plus 110 divided by two, and the mid-range equals 77.5, 77 and a half minutes. Awesome. All right, so now the mean. How do we find that arithmetic mean? Perfect, you add up all the values and divide it by the total number of values. So I'm gonna introduce a little, well, refresh you on a little notation. We're dealing with a sample. So recall that X bar is the summation of all the X's divided by the number of data values. And this one, I'll leave that to you. We're basically summing up every one of these values and dividing by Beautiful, dividing by six. So this ends up being the summation of X that I got was 544. I was adding up all of the times and then the number of times, we had six times. And that is approximately 90.7 minutes. So, I don't know, I'm looking at this stuff, what do you think? What's the best measure? Yeah. There's a couple in the 90s, you know, but uh, in the mid-range is kind of pulled down. I would say in this case, the median. Do you see right here, this is kind of the, the, the center to me of the data. If you rotated that 90 degrees, that would have the bulk of the data. Granted, it's a small data set, so um, it doesn't level out very well, but I'm going with median as the best measure. All right, groovy, let's move on. So here we go, I've provided you with probably a much better histogram than I drew by hand. <laughs> um, I went ahead and started, I don't know if you recall or if you saw the earlier video on creating or constructing histograms without technology. And if you haven't, feel free to go to the MathChick Maricosta site, MathChickMC on YouTube 
and uh, you can find that video. But what I had initially done was I had made inclusive weights and then sort of labeled them and they really kind of, the way I'd done it, looked like nominal variables, but they really weren't. But yeah, upon reflection, you know, it's better this way. If you go to the decimal and then figure out a good class width and min and max. So this is what I did with the same data. Um, just so you could see, I did this in JMP and I used 17.8 as the class width and I used five classes. All right, so let's get that down. Class width. Seventeen point eight. This is in percentages, and we're using five classes. Okay, so how many data values? I, I made the table for us just so this could go faster, but how many data values would you say fall in this first column? So if we look at this first column and you go across, do you see there's two? So we have our frequency of two. How do we find that class mid-range? Oh yeah, we average, right? The min and max and divide by two. So when I found this one, not too bad. I just simply did 10.9 plus, now the new one starts at 28.8, so I'm gonna say 28.7 divided by two, which is equal to, which is equal to 19.8. And then when I double 19.8, why am I doubling it? Beautiful, because of this two right here. So when I times that one by two, I get 39.6. All right, so here, the evil plan, remember, or not so evil plan, if that offends you, is to find the frequency, which was two, find the mid-range or average of the class endpoints, which was 19.8, multiply them, and we got 39.6. Groovy? All right, so the next class, so this one here, represented the two. Now, here, this column, right, repre represents how many? Good, three counts, right? Because if you look over here, that's about three. So, again, you find the mid-range. So the mid-range is going to be what? Beautiful, 28.8 plus, awesome, 46.6 all over, it's not very good, all over two, and that's equal to 113.1 is what I got. Now we have to multiply that value by what? Awesome, we have to multiply. So the mid-range gives us an exam value at beautiful 37.7, which does fall in that column. And when I multiply it by three, which is my frequency count, I get about 113.1. Groovy? Awesome. All right, so next up we have the third column. And let's see, I'll do it in this color. The lavender, how many scores fall into this category? Beautiful, three. And I'm going from 46.7 
and my other endpoint will be about 64.5 dividing that by 2 and I get an exam score in awesome about the 55.6 percentage point range now when I multiply 55.6 by 3 I get 166.8 and then we keep going. Um, I don't know if I'll make this one faster. I want to make sure you guys are comfortable. Uh, the next column, we just have two more. I'll do in blue. This blue. And we're going to have 64.6 plus 82.4 divided by 2. And that will give us Beautiful, 73.5 percentage points. Now there were 10, 10 tests that fell into that class. And so that ends up being 735. Right? And finally, we will have this last one in green, which again represents a count of 10 exams that fall into that class. And the mid range ends up being 82.5 plus. Now, how do we know that other number? Remember this here that the class width is 17.8%? So when I add 17.8, which is our class width, to the 82.5, I'll figure out our ending value, and we'll get 100.3. So this is 100.3. And dividing by 2, we will have about 91.4 and then multiplying that by 10 we'll get 914 so when you go through and you add up these values the far right column which is the summation of the product of the frequencies and the mid ranges ends up being not 1,968 and a half 0.5. So that's this column here. And then we don't need a total for the mid-range. It wouldn't give us any info. But the summation of the frequencies is important because that will be our denominator. And so that ends up being, if you remember from this example, 28. We had 28 test scores x bar, it turns out, is equal to the summation of the frequency count times x all over summation of the frequency count, which we got to be equal to, beautiful, 1,968.5 over 28 percentages which is approximately 70.3 percentage points. Actually, it should just be percent. Huh. Now, do you remember what the arithmetic mean was way back when? I know it was like a week or two ago. It's got to be difficult. Yes, it was 70.6%. So, not far. But, as I recall, the mean wasn't the best measure for this data because there were beautiful outliers going on. All right? So, I'm just going to kind of match up everything here, and we'll be good to go on this problem. All right, so on to example three, which is our last example. And this, I'm sure, will be quite relevant to you. At Miracosta College, our grading scale has no pluses or minuses. 
So, grades and points are coded as follows. An A is represented by 4, a B is represented by 3, C represented by 2, D represented by 1, and F represented by 0. Suppose that Liliana receives an A in statistics, which is a four unit course, a C in bio, which is a three unit course, an A in psychology, which is a three unit course, and a B in computer science, which is a five unit course this semester. What is her GPA or grade point average for the semester? So let's figure out what our weight category is. So the weight. What do you think? We need to figure out what represents the weights and what represents the X, right? The X. So if your classes were all equally weighted, you could just find the simple arithmetic mean, couldn't you? But since different classes have different numbers of units sometimes, aren't the classes that have more units weighted more heavily? So, hmm, maybe that means that the weight is the number of units per class. That's what I think. And then the X would be the grade earned. And remember that the grade earned in the class is coded numerically. So, what the heck? So we have whatever class it was, right? Meaning uh, class Liliana took. Not anything complicated. And so what did she take? She took stats. She took biology, bio, she took psych, she took computer science, so four classes, right? And what else do we need to know? We need to know the, the number of units in each class, which represents the, beautiful, the weight. So stats had four units, bio had, I think, three, psych had three, and computer science had five. Alrighty, what else do we need to know? Remember, our, our formula is the x bar is equal to the summation of the weight times x all over summation of the weight. Right? So we'll end up with a total column. Summation of the weights is equal to 4 plus 3 plus 3 is 10 plus 5 is 15. And now what do we need to know? Beautiful, the grade Liliana earned. Oops. And it's the coded grade, right? So in stats, what did she get? She got an A. So that's coded as 4 or 4.0. Bio, she earned A, C. Must not have been as comfortable in bio, so that's worth 2. Psych, she earned an A. So she got a 4, that means A in this chart and in computer science, which was a five unit course, she got A, B. So that is assigned a number three. So our totals here, we need to find W times X, right? So here you just take, this is our X right here, or I'll do it in parens like I did the weight. So 4 times 4 is 16. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 4 is 12. 5 times 3 is 15. 
addition of W times X, we get beautiful 49. Good so far? All right, so X bar is summation W times X divided by summation W, so we end up getting equals 49 divided by summation W was 15, and that was approximately 3.27. So Liliana's GPA for this semester is 3.27 points. All right, well, have a wonderful evening or afternoon or morning, depending on when you're watching this. And don't forget to subscribe to Math Chick Maricosta, Math Chick MC.